Let's look at this problem from Stuart about uh, a tabular approximation to a mixed partial. So we want to eventually find the mixed partial fxy at 3, 2. So that's a derivative in the y direction of a derivative in the x direction. So I'm going to want to make at least a limited table of, if this is f, I'd want to make a limited table of fx so that I can take its derivative in the y direction. Now, what values am I going to need for that? Okay, so that's something where we want to remember good ways of taking tabular derivatives. Um, I'm going to want to look at the function f(x). Once I get it, I don't need to look at it for any other values but x equals three, because to to take the y derivative, the y partial derivative of something, uh, I hold x constant, so I just need x equals three. So I don't even really need too much of this table. Okay, I'm just going to need x equals 3. Okay, the rest of it is going to be irrelevant here. And then I'm going to want to vary it around 2. y variable near 2 and do a difference quotient. Now, the thing about tabular derivatives is that if even though I want to get the derivative of this new function, which I'm going to get pretty soon, don't worry, at 2, the most efficient way to get a, a best approximation in general is to actually bracket that that value and what I'm really going to do is I'm going to look at these two values for the function so I'd like to fill in these slots for the derivative uh, the fx and then I'll be able to take the y derivative okay so now how would I get this value now that goes back to f okay so I really want um, two numbers I want fx at 1.8 comma 3 and then I'm going to do fx at one at 2.2 comma 3. Now the x derivatives is where I just take the original function f and oops 3 comma 1.8 my bad. Now since it's an x derivative I hold the y variable constant at 1.8 and I'm going to look, want to look at how that varies as I go through 3 in the x variable. Once again though I'm going to bracket it. I'm not even going to look at this guy. I'm going to bracket it with these two values and so I'm going to take 20 minus 12.5 over 3.5 minus 2.5. Rise over run. Change in the output divided by change in the input. In this case, that's x. Now that happens to be 1, and so I get 7.5. Okay, now fx at 3 comma 2.2, that uses these values. Because I'm going to bracket the 3 value again. 26.1 minus 9.3 over just a 1 again, it's the same spread in the x values, and that is 16.8. Okay, so now I can put those in here. This was the mystery value here. This is the mystery value. So this is a limited table of fx. I could, in principle, calculate all these guys to whatever degree of accuracy, um, but in order to get fxy at 3, 2, now I'm going to take the y derivative of this function and I'd like to get it right here um, and to do that I'm going to bracket with these values so let's get the eraser here and I'm going to have so fxy of 3 2 approximately equals okay now the y variable is going from 1.8 to 2.2 .2, so I'm going to take 2.2 .2 minus 1.8 and then I'm going to look at the 16.8 minus 7.5. Okay, so that's um, 9.3 over 0 0.4 and then let's see, that's really 9.3 multiplying by 0 0.4 is multiplying by 2.5 that's 18.6, I could do this with a calculator but it's more fun to do it by hand Half of 9.3 is 4.65, and so that's 23.25. Okay, so kind of a multi-step procedure, but I want to point out something that's actually a very interesting theoretical import. Notice the actual original values, so the original values of the function. Notice what got used. It's these circled ones. It's these four values. When you use this bracketing technique, I definitely didn't use f of 3, 2. And I didn't actually use these four values either. I just used these corner values. And I want to just show you how they come in. If we actually just kind of do it in one fell swoop, 
this guy was approximately, let's see if I have enough room for this expression, actually no, I'll put it down here because I don't need that anymore. Okay. What happened was I took um, this minus this, I took the 26.1 minus the 9.3, and then minus the 20 minus 12.5. Now each of those came in with a denominator. I'm going to actually put the denominator back in, but I'm going to put it as a common denominator. That was the 3.5 minus 2.5. So this over this was the derivative of 2.2. This over this was the derivative of 1.8, and then I took the difference of those guys, and then I did 2.2 minus 1.8. Okay, and there's an interesting pattern here. I get this one with a plus sign, this one with a minus sign, this one with a minus sign, because I'm going to distribute that guy in, and then that changed to be a plus sign. So there is actually a slick way of doing it all at once, which is just to look at the four corner points, Remember this plus along the diagonal and minus on the anti-diagonal. Take that combination of the values and then divide by the product of the distance in x you went and the distance in y you went. Now you're not going to necessarily need to memorize. You're not going to memorize this, okay? Um, but it's kind of cool that I like this sort of plus minus pattern. Um, and there's a, there's a big reason I like it. Remember we've got this claim called Clairaut's theorem that if I had done fyx, at 3, 2, I would get the same answer. Well, let's think about it. If I had done f, y, x, what gets changed? The roles of x and y just get flipped, so I kind of flip it across this diagonal. But if I flip it across the diagonal, I'm going to get exactly the same pattern. I'm going to get, if I, I look at the complicated two-stage process of doing this, I'm going to end up using the same four numbers. And it's not too hard to see. If you don't trust me, try it out. You're going to end up getting exactly the same pattern of signs, basically because the pattern of signs is symmetric across that diagonal. And I'm going to divide by the denominators. It's going to happen to be that I'll, I'm going to notice that I need to divide by these first and then divide by these. But it doesn't matter what order you divide them in. So this formula for the mixed partial, where you just take the four corners, plus, plus, minus, minus, and divide by the product of the difference, the delta x and the delta y, is completely symmetric in x and y, is what I'm trying to say. And so that makes sense that, OK, um, that's, that's getting actually fairly close to a proof of Clairaut's theorem. Because how, what's the derivative really equal to? It's equal to this kind of idea where you take the delta x and delta y and you take the limit as goes to 0. But it's very strong evidence that when we do it in a tabular way with the delta x and delta y not going to 0, I still get this pattern that's intrinsically symmetric once I unravel the two-stage process and put it into this one um, kind of clever shortcut formula. So that's part of the reason I assign this problem, not because we're going to do a lot of graphical mixed partials, but because the mixed partial is kind of a great thing to practice. It's the trickiest kind of, of second partial. It's the really new one. And the fact that this is really the sort of the start of a proof of Clairaut's theorem.